Tiny Toons Adventures, Buster's Hidden Treasure was developed by Konami. Now that's almost a guarantee that it's going to be at least good, if not great. So as the story goes, Montana Max has hidden some treasure from Buster, and Buster's on a mission to get it back. This is your typical jump on enemies' heads type of platformer. Buster runs at normal speed for a few seconds, but starts to move rather quickly as you continue to run in any direction. I like the fact that you can easily control the jumps in this game. What I mean by that is the longer you hold the jump button, the longer you'll hang in the air. If you want a quick jump, just tap the button. I like this level of control. You'll dodge obstacles, jump on enemies, and collect carrots through many different styles of levels from forest treetops to caves to snow-covered mountains. The game features a vast selection of environments and the visuals are very easy to look at. The music is quirky and goofy and sounds like something straight from the cartoon. The boss battles are definitely one of the shining points of the game. Overall, this is a very good game and I can play it for hours without getting bored. I was going to get into Strider 2, but uh, well, this game was just such a disappointment that I'm still a little butthurt over it. It's not a horrible game, but it just does not live up to the Strider name. Cool Spot, on the other hand, is one of those games that on paper doesn't work, but in this rare occasion of marketing strategy, it's a home run. I absolutely loved this game as a kid. This is a very well put together platformer by Virgin Games. You control Spot through many different levels as you attempt to locate and free other spots that are imprisoned. You do have a time limit and sometimes it can be a bit difficult to locate the hidden spots as the levels are not completely linear. Your only form of attack is the ability to throw bubbles at your enemy. Enemies range from crabs to mice to spiders, really anything, and they aren't typically difficult to defeat. 7-Up bottles, or uh, are they glasses? I don't know. The 7-Up restores your health, as you're only allowed to take a certain amount of damage before the game's over. And this game was praised for its sound. It definitely has some great music and utilizes the Genesis capabilities without blaring out that twangy nonsense that a lot of these games had at the time. Just like other Virgin games developed at the time, Cool Spot has some pretty impressive graphics. The quality of the animation reminds me a lot of Aladdin. Actually, the success of this game led to Disney going to Virgin to develop Aladdin. This is really a good platformer, and you can pick this up for only a few bucks. It's well worth it. Road Blasters was a popular arcade game in the late 80s, created by Atari, and was one of the many arcade games that landed on the Genesis. The goal is to reach the end of the level without running out of fuel. On the way, you'll face obstacles like other vehicles, mines, and drone guns. There are fuel pickups throughout the level, most of them given after destroying enemy vehicles, but you'll also receive fuel for passing through checkpoints. There are gun power-ups that I always manage to avoid. You will lose them, though, as soon as you take damage, which seems to happen to me every time I do end up landing one of these gun power-ups. The graphics were a bit dated and a bit simple, but very smooth. The music is a bit twangy for my liking, and towards the end of each race you'll hear this really annoying siren sounding noise. This game was actually featured in a scene from the movie Wreck-It Ralph, which is pretty cool. It definitely has a high replay value for me, there's just something about this game that's addicting. Now this game is the definition of crap fest. Another game based on a movie, another major flop. Last Action Hero for the Genesis, as well as the SNES, is one of the most worthless games I've ever played. I mean, what were they thinking? I feel bad enough paying $3 for this game. Imagine people back in 1993 paying $40 or $50 on this. This game is pretty much broken. The controls are horrible and it's nearly impossible to fight enemies. The music sounds like something out of a 70s porno and the graphics are borderline NES. I loved this movie as a kid, so I made the mistake of renting this. 
try to block that weekend out of my memory to this day. Playing this again didn't really help. Lotus Turbo Challenge was released in 1991 and it's actually a sequel. You see the original was released for the Amiga and Commodore 64. When the sequel came out they decided to name it Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 for those platforms but not for the Genesis as the first game never released on a Sega console. Talk about making things confusing. If you've ever played the Top Gear games you'd feel right at home with this game but actually I'm here to talk about the sequel which is, I guess, technically the third game in the series, but for the Genesis, it's known as Lotus 2. This game lets you select your vehicle, which the first did not. You'll find three fine Lotus automobiles to choose from. The Esprit Turbo, a concept car from the time called the M200, and the Alain. Okay, so you really only get one good car to choose from. Another great feature was the track creator. Now, you don't have full creative control down to every turn, but you can pick from scenery and adjust sliders for length, hills, curves, obstacles, and more. This was actually pretty cool for 1992. The first title on the Genesis didn't feature music while racing, just sound effects. This game does the exact opposite, which I probably prefer as 16-bit engine noise usually just gives me a headache after more than a few minutes. Now what I like so much about this game is its ease of control. I can come back after years of not playing this game and pick it up right away. I can really appreciate that. There's plenty of levels to race through, each with their own unique backgrounds, obstacles, and weather. It can get a little bit tough at times as you're racing the clock, trying to get to checkpoints as quickly as possible. If you crash into just a few objects, you're probably going to run out of time. But again, with its easy handling, this shouldn't be a problem too often. Graphically, it's not the best looking game, but it is an early game engine and I feel it does well enough. I had a lot of fun with this game as a kid, and if you like 16-bit racers, this is worth getting without question. Road Rash was the racing game of all racing games for me as a kid. I mean, you're not just racing against opponents, you're beating them up with weapons, you're running from cops, dodging traffic, and hell, if you get bored, you can just go for a jog. This game just felt like something fresh and new in 1991. The first game takes place in California, giving you a few highway courses to choose from. Each track gives nice variety, but not as much as later Road Rash games would. There are eight different bikes you'll be striving to acquire throughout the game and each one as you progress will have better attributes. Road Rash doesn't feature a real two-player mode which is really a shame. There is a take turns mode but who wants to sit there and wait for their friend to finish playing before they can? This game looks great, sounds great, and plays great and if you haven't played it yet you've been living in a box or something. This is a must-own if you have a Genesis. The sequel, Road Rash 2, keeps the same graphical presentation and gameplay and simply adds to it. This go-around, you'll need to place at least third or better to advance, which is a change from the first game's fourth or better. There are a total of 15 bikes to collect, and they're split up into three different classes. Road Rash 2 ventures outside of the Golden State and takes the tour across the whole U.S. You can race through Hawaii, Alaska, and Vermont, just to name a few. Oh, and this game has a real split-screen two-player mode. This game just takes the original formula and simply adds to it. This is probably my favorite Road Rash game for the Genesis. They went on to have many other Road Rash games in the series. Road Rash 3 saw a release on the Genesis, as well as many other games that hit the PlayStation and Nintendo 64. But these here are the two that I feel truly represent the series. I only wish they could make a current gen version of this game, maybe with a Midnight Club, Need for Speed type of feel to it. Well, that's all I've got for today. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I really want to thank you fans for continuing to subscribe and for watching my videos.